Welcome to another episode of GTN Coaches Corner, where we answer all your triathlon-related questions. Today's questions are all about zones, and we're going to delve into power zones and heart rate zones. If you have your own questions on zones or anything else triathlon-related, leave them in the comment section down below. Use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, and we could be answering your questions next week. Right, let's get straight into our questions. Adam Sherritt asks, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. I'm looking to do more zone 2 training as part of an 80-20 training plan. If I put my max heart rate into both Garmin and Strava, they come up with different heart rate zones, with Strava being significantly higher than Garmin. Going, to, going by being able to talk in full sentences when running, I would say the Garmin feels more accurate, but just wondered if I should be building up to use the Strava percentage for zone 2, or if one is better than the other. Okay, uh, both Garmin and Strava use algorithms to work out your heart rate zones, uh, and it depends on the data that you put in. As far as I know, and I may be wrong here, Strava simply uses your max heart rate calculated by the standard 220 minus age and works out your zones based on that. Garmin takes it a step further, uses what they call heart rate reserve, where it takes your estimated max heart rate, subtracts your resting heart rate or estimated resting heart rate, uh, and then uses heart rate reserve to work out your zones, which is why you've seen a slight difference. Now, neither of these are particularly accurate unless the numbers that you put in are accurate. So if your max heart rate you've put in is accurate and actually measured, it's going to be significantly more accurate. If you're just guessing it based on your age, it could be way out. Some people who are 40 don't have a 220 minus age max heart rate of 180, they might get as high as 200. So you need to make sure that those numbers you're putting in are accurate. The best solution to get your zones is to actually test so that you've got accurate numbers. Now you can do a max heart rate test, which is obviously measuring your maximum heart rate, but that of course requires you to put in a maximal effort, which can hurt quite a lot. Uh, a better option is to do a threshold test or estimate your lactate threshold using a test. Generally, this is done using a 20-minute uh, maximal effort, or as hard as you can go for 20 minutes, either on the bike or the run, uh, and using the results of that to estimate where your threshold is and then work your zones out uh, from that. Now, your zones are going to look something like this. I'm going to put them on screen now. So your lactate threshold zones or your max heart rate zones. Your lactate threshold zones less than 85% is zone 1. Zone 2 is 85 to 89%. Uh, zone 3, 90 to 94%. Zone 4, 95 to 99%, which is right on that lactate threshold, which should be what you could absolutely sustain uh, for an hour if you were really, really motivated. Uh, zone 5, 100 to 102%. Uh, zone 5B, 103 to 106. And then zone 5C is just maximum effort. For max heart rate, similar, you can see uh, the how hard it actually feels. So zone 1 is very light, 50 to 60% of max heart rate. Zone 2 is just light, 60 to 70%. Zone 3, moderate, 70 to 80% of your max heart rate. Zone 4 is hard, which is 80 to 90% of your max heart rate. And then up to maximum heart rate, obviously, is zone five. That's your maximal effort. Uh, those zones, obviously, there's all different ways to work out zones, and they're going to be little tweaks here and there, depending on what zones you're using. Uh, I'm going to pick up on one of Adam's other questions in there, and he was, and that was, should he train to be able to build up to the zones that uh, Strava is setting him? So, example, if Strava says you're should be in zone two, and zone two feels too hard, should he train so that zone two doesn't feel too hard? And that is absolutely not what you should do. Your zones should correspond immediately as soon as you've set them to what they, what their perceived exertion should be for each zone. So for example, light, very light, moderate, hard, should feel light, very light, moderate, and hard in those zones. You shouldn't have to train so that your zone two feels somewhat, so, so, feels light. It should already feel light immediately, otherwise your zones are not correct. You don't train to fit your zones, your zone should fit your current fitness. I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's move on to our next question. It's from Declan Gallagher and he says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Hi guys, I appreciate the vast majority of people's slow runs are too fast for their targeted adaptation, but do you ever feel that your slow run is too slow? have read a 1.5 to 2 millimole lactic acid is ideal. Okay, well in terms of lactic acid concentration, uh, under 2 millimoles per litre is ideal, and if you go in above that, you probably are running too hard, but I think that's a number that for most people is completely arbitrary and foreign to them. They're not doing lactate tests while they're out on their long run. So what you should be doing is controlling your, your effort and keeping it low and slow. Now, a long run, the fatigue and the 
the tiredness you feel, the pain you feel should come from the duration, not from the intensity. For if you, if you wanna keep a handle on this, people say talking pace, that means that you're really not putting too much effort in or breathing too hard. Uh, to, to have an idea or what you should be thinking of here, you should get tired from the time that you're out there, not from the effort. So you should want to stop at the end of your long run, but slowing down shouldn't really feel like it's going to help anything. Um, if you think I can carry on for another hour, but I just have to slow down a little bit, you've probably been running that long run a bit too fast. Uh, you want to get to the end of the long run tired, but tired from the duration, not from the intensity. Uh, a long run is designed to work that zone two, zone one, where you're going to build up your capillary density, your ability to use fuel at that low uh, intensity, uh, your mitochondria efficiency, and all of those things are done uh, below about 70% of your maximum heart rate or 85% of your lactate threshold heart rate. Um, it can feel like your long run is too slow, and that's pretty normal, a lot of people feel this, uh, but uh, stick with it. Over time, in your long run, in that low zone, you will get more efficient at it, and your pace will increase for the same heart rate, and that's how you know that you're getting fitter. Uh, so stick with it, stick to those low zones, try not to get into that gray zone too much. Okay, next question, uh, Mill of Gary Oshford. Hi, I'm trying to adjust my training, zone down to zone two efforts. However, I'm finding it really tough as it seems so slow and I have a tendency to creep back into zone three where I've done all the majority of my training except on the days we're going to zone four and five. Will zone two training work in the long run? Well, same question, I literally just answered that. Uh, yes, it will work and as I've just said, it will take time. You have to stick with it and build up that fitness at that zone two and the only way you do that is by running in zone two. So you need to keep your long run in zone two. Over time, yes, initially it will feel really slow and you maybe even have to walk on the uphills to keep your heart rate down, uh, really slow it down on the hills, keep it slow the whole time. What you will find is that as you get more efficient in that zone that you are training, you'll be able to run further, you'll be able to run more comfortably and faster at the same heart rate zone. Uh, and that is what you're training for. You're training to be efficient at that low intensity. So stick with it. Uh, it, is, it is difficult to stick to. What you can do is set an upper limit on your, on your heart rate monitor so that it beeps if you go above that and then just make sure you're keeping below that. Uh, you will find that your pace increases below that, that alarm that you've set as you stick with it over time. If you do keep creeping into zone three and four, what you're essentially training is those zone three and four, and you're never training that low intensity, uh, oxygen utilization, oxygen efficiency that you need to be training in zone two. Okay, uh, Stormy, S7 or me, says, hi, GTN Coaches Corner, which zone do I have to be in on race day? That's a pretty short question and uh, pretty broad. What race are we talking about here? I uh, don't know, he doesn't give me any information. We obviously need to, that'll depend on your race distance, your race duration, and also even your race type if you're doing a run versus a cycle, etc. cetera. Um, it also depends on your level and your zones. Um, are you talking about power zones? Are you talking about heart rate zones? Which zone are we talking about? Um, briefly, for an Ironman, low zones. Most people are gonna do the entire Ironman in zone two and never go into zone three. Uh, occasionally, uh, zone three heart rate for the more elite guys, the elite, the pros, will be trying to stick to zone three most of the time, maybe even touching zone four occasionally. But for most people, Ironman is a long, slow day. It is just about fatigue tolerance, uh, and you don't actually wanna be going into zone three at all. For 70.3, a bit more of zone three for most people, uh, and the pros will even be touching zone four for occasional periods. Uh, for a standard distance, for elites, standard distance triathlon is an hour on the bike, which is pretty much your threshold, and they're gonna be trying to stick pretty much exactly on that threshold the whole way around. Uh, for age groupers, you're probably gonna be a little bit lower than that, so high zone three for your heart rate. Uh, if that gives you a rough idea, I hope it does. Obviously, uh, if you're talking about power, 70 to 75% of your lactate threshold power for a Ironman, uh, 80 to 85% of your lactate threshold power for a 70.3, uh, and a little higher for a standard distance. Now, this obviously also depends on your fitness. Uh, you can't, your heart rate zones are relevant and your power zones are relevant for that 20 minute maximal test that you did to see what they were. 
if you're not fit enough to sustain that for three, four, five hours, it's irrelevant uh, what zone you're trying to keep and you won't be able to keep as high. Obviously the pros are training to keep in that zone for the full duration of their race. So it depends on your fitness, it depends on your, on your preparation for the race, but I hope that gives you some kind of idea. It very much depends on what your training is. So you should be training to hold as high a zone as possible on race day, but don't overcook it because you'll pay for it later on. Okay. Uh, Christian Wirth asks, hashtag GT in the coach's corner, is there anything wrong with doing pretty much only aerobic based training and not much speed work? I really enjoy running, at a, but at a steady pace. So not doing much speed work, what am I losing out on? And is there any risk to this? Well, there's no risk to it. Uh, you just won't get faster, potentially. That's the only risk. The downside, um, your fitness gains will plateau if you only ever run at a low intensity. Uh, you have to challenge your body for it to adapt. So if you're not challenging it, if you're doing what you always do, it will just do the bare minimum and keep you there. Your fitness gains will start to plateau. You would either have to add miles and miles more, more duration to, uh, to get any fitness gain, or you will just stagnate and not get any fitness gain at all. And if you are okay with that, if you just wanna stay reasonably fit, that's fine. Um, but if you wanna see any fitness improvements, I would suggest you do some intervals, some higher intensity stuff. Note that it doesn't have to be much. You don't have to do a whole hour session of high intensity stuff. The whole session doesn't have to hurt. Just a few intervals, a few hill repeats, a few fast runs uh, during your long run or during a run is going to be enough to stimulate some adaptation, some fitness improvement. Uh, you don't have to do much speed work to see big benefits from it, which is, it's really time efficient. So it is worthwhile doing. I know you might feel like you'd like to just go for a jog and that's fine, go for a jog. But occasionally, if you do wanna see a fitness boost, hit those higher zones, even for a few one minute efforts or something like that, uh, which will see big fitness boosts. Uh, but there's no risk. If you just wanna run easy all the time, run easy all the time. You just will see some fitness plateaus. Okay, last question for today. And it's from Bonsai Nutter. GTN Coaches Corner, I have a question about building mitochondria. The studies I have read say zone two is the best, but is it zone two power or zone two heart rate? And if it's heart rate, is it zone two in any exercise like running, cycling, or swimming that will build mitochondria? Thanks. Okay, um, aerobic work will build mitochondria. Mitochondria, if you don't know, are the energy producing mechanism, the organelles inside your muscles that turn uh, energy into usable energy, turn oxygen and fuel into usable energy for your muscles. Uh, and the more you have and the more efficient they are, the faster your body can turn, can produce energy for your muscles to work, so the more efficient you're going to be. Uh, and zone two training, aerobic training, is going to do that. Now your zones, as far as power versus heart rate, they should roughly correspond. They're talking about zone two heart rate um, zones in there, but they should roughly correspond. Your zone two power should roughly correspond to your zone two heart rate anyway. As far as the specificity goes of this, so will running and cycling and swimming all produce the same effect? Uh, essentially, zone two training will, yes, create the same effect, but mitochondria are inside your muscles. They are very specific to the muscle that they are in. So if you're training, you're swimming your shoulder muscles and those mitochondria get really efficient because you're doing a lot of zone two swimming, uh, that's not gonna help you at all on the run. Uh, those mitochondria are not gonna transfer their energy to the muscles that are in your legs. They will uh, only be good for swimming. So if you want specificity, you have to train what you're going to actually race or what you want to train, what you want to improve. Uh, there are other benefits, of course, to improving working in zone two beyond mitochondria. So you're gonna get better hematocrit, better breathing efficiency, better heart rate and circulatory function. And all of those do correspond and do transfer. So running will transfer to swimming, to cycling, etc. Uh, but if you're talking mitochondria here, they are very specific to the muscle that you are training. They will be efficient and get better in the muscle that you train. I hope that helps and if you have more questions on zones and zone training and what zones do what, please leave them in the comment section down below and we could be answering them in a future episode. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week.